All right, just heading to the final table. Gonna play some one, two, no limit tonight. Hit that like button and wish me some run good. All right, let's get it. I belong, I belong to you. I belong, I belong to you. Today, I go play the 1 to No Limit game at the final table. I buy in for the max $400. I get my chips and head to the table. Starting off the session, one player limps in and then I look down at 9 10 of spades and raise it to $15. Only under the gun calls and we go heads up to a flop. The flop's a good one. Deuce 5 3, all spades, and I flop a flush. I did a little research here. Okay, momentum of the derivative, 2x plus infinity equal to 25 seven, uh, 25 cents. Uh. And the percentage of flopping a flush is 0.8% chance. So I guess you can say I got pretty lucky here. Better yet, under the gun leaves out for $20. I just make the flat call being in position and I don't want to raise here and scare off my opponent in case he's bluffing. The turn is the queen of hearts and he leaves out again, this time for $30. Again, I just make the flat call and we go heads up to a river. I think you can go either way here and make the flat call being in position or make the raise just in case he's on a draw and maybe he has the ace of spades in his hand. Both plays are good. He leads out for a third time, $40. I just make the flat call. I did think about raising here, but I felt like only a bigger flush was going to call. My opponent shows ace three for bluff and I take down the pot. So even if I did raise here, there was no way he was calling. I will say though, for future games, I definitely gotta make a raise on the turn or the river because I'm missing out on a lot of value. But for this player specifically, he was an old Asian man and they're never bluffing. So I just thought he had it. So I was actually really surprised that he was actually bluffing, but I take down the spot. Just a couple hands later, only under the gun in the small blind calls. And then I look down at Jack Queen suited and raise it to $12. Both players call and we go three ways to a flop. The flop is 5-9 deuce all off suit. Action checks all around, and the turn is a 9 of diamonds, pairing the board, but it does bring in the backdoor flush draw. This time, the small blind leads out for $15, and with how the pre-flop action went with both of them limping in and then checking the flop, I felt like this was weak and he was just trying to take a small stab at it to take down the pot. So then I raise it to $50, and even if someone does call, I could hit my flush on the river. Both players quickly fold and I get this little bluff through. The dealer actually shows the river, the four clubs. So I'm glad they both folded because I would have break my flush draw. Whew, thank goodness, but moving on. Two hands later and now I'm on the button and I straddle for $10. Normally, I usually just put $5, which is the minimum to straddle. But I was feeling pretty good and I was in the mood to gamble, gamble, baby. Only the player to my left calls and then I look down at queen seven offsuit and I just check and we go heads up to a flop. The flop is not too bad. Queen nine ace all offsuit and because he didn't raise pre-flop, it's hard to put him on the ace x kind of hand. Action checks to me and I bet out $10. He makes the quick call and then the turn is a seven hearts, now giving me two pair. Action again checks to me and this time I bet out $30. He calls again pretty quickly so maybe he has hand like 10 jack for a straight draw, or maybe he does have an ace. Maybe a weak ace like ace 3, ace 4, ace 5 offsuit, and didn't want to raise preflop. The river is a deuce of diamonds, which breaks any possible draws out there. He checks it over me for a third time, and this time, I size up pretty big, trying to make it look like I was trying to steal the pot. I bet $100, and he snap folds. Damn, did I get too greedy there? Sucks that he folded, but... Not too bad for his queen seven offsuit, so I'll definitely take it. A whole orbit goes around and I straddle again for $10. Hey, if the $10 worked last time, what's the saying? Don't fix what's not broken, right? Only the player to my right calls, and then I look down at ace king offsuit and raise it to $35. My opponent snap puts a stack of $105 in a split second. I mean, I didn't even have time to pull back my hand completely out yet. Damn, chill bro, I get it, you got a strong hand. Damn, you just that excited, huh? Must be aces or kings, but I do have both blockers here, so I'm hoping he has pocket queens. I do tank for a minute,
because I was actually thinking about shoving here. But him putting that stack out so fast, I'm not gonna lie, it kind of scared me a little bit. But I was thinking if I shove here, that would put a lot of pressure if he actually did have pocket jacks or pocket queens. I end up just making the call and we go heads up to a flop. The flop is 10 king 10 all off suit and surprisingly, he checks it over to me. Now I'm definitely putting him on pocket queens or pocket jacks because the way he played it, I just don't see him slowing down and checking it over to me and this is definitely a scary board for those hands I just mentioned that he might have. So when action's on me, I bet out $75, he snap folds. Comment down below and tell me how you guys feel when your opponent snap raises you like how my opponent did to me. It just felt so strong and I actually did think about folding there for a second. The very next hand and hell of players limp in and then I look down at king 10 of diamonds and raise it to $15. Three players call, and we go four ways to a flop. The flop is nine queen seven with two hearts, and I don't have much here. Action checks on me, and most of the time, I should be seeing better here. But this board should be hitting my opponent's calling range way more often than my range. And I would hate to get check raised here. I check, and we go to a turn, which is a pretty good one. The eight of diamonds now give me an up and down straight draw. This time, the player to my right bets out $25. I didn't want to just make the flat call with two players behind, and if I raised here, then I would be in position to the player to my right in case I miss my straight on the river. So I take the more aggressive route and raise it to $75. Everyone quickly folds and I get a little semi bluff through. This next hand actually gets raised to $15. Two players call and then I look down at deuce three of diamonds and make the call and we go four ways to a flop. The flop is not too bad. 5 8 ace with 2 clubs, and I need a 4 for my gutter straight. Action checks to the pre-flop aggressor, and she bets out $20. Only I make the call, and we go heads up to a turn. The turn is the 5 of diamonds, now give me a straight draw. I check it over to her, and this time, she bets out $40. I'm putting her on an ace x kind of hand, and I don't think she's ever folding if I raise here. So I just make the call. I need a diamond or a 4, and I should be good. See you on the river. The river is the four of hearts now give me my straight what did i say see you on the river baby let's go i do think about checking over for a third time but i didn't want this checking through so i size up big 200 dollars just trying to make it look like i missed my flush draw and that i'm just trying to steal the pot like i said before i'm putting my opponent on a strong ace x kind of hand so maybe ace king or ace queen which should be making this call. My opponent does tank for a whole minute before letting it go. Actually, uh, good fold, good fold. I might have gotten a little too greedy here. And maybe I should have sized down to about $100 to $125 for value. But looking back now, I still like my bet by me because the whole table knows me and that I'm very capable of bluffing here. But I'm just glad I got there on the river and we take down a decent sized pot. Spoiler alert, biggest hand of the night. As some time goes on, C8 raised at $13 and then I look down at pocket sevens in the small blind and make the call. C7 then surprisingly raises the $45. Now here, she did limp in for $2. So usually if a player wants to make a squeeze play here to try to take down the pot pre-flop, they probably would have sized up a lot more. So I'm definitely putting this opponent on a big pocket pair like aces or kings. C8 calls and when action's on me, easy call here. So that's what I do. Let's go set mining, baby. The flop is 6, 7, 10, all off suit. And I flop middle set. Hey, okay, okay. Let's go, baby. First action's on me and I check to the three better and she bets out $75. C8 folds and again, I'm putting my opponent on pocket aces or pocket kings. So when action's on me, I don't want to slow play my middle set being out of position. So I raise it to $250. I know people don't like folding pocket aces. And this is a good board to put maximum pressure on aces because there's no flush draws and I barely have 8-9 here. So let's see how much you like your aces here. My opponent tanks for almost two whole minutes. So now I definitely know she has an over pair because ace king is letting this one go real quick. She ends up making the call and we go heads up to a turn, which is the eight of spades. I then put my opponent all in for 175 more dollars. 
After about 30 seconds, my opponent announces, call. The river pairs the board with another six, and now I have a full house. I show my sevens, and we're good, and we stack her. She never shows, but I'm pretty sure she had pocket aces. Sheesh. You ain't no 8-8, eight, eight, Ron. Son of a bitch! You done messed up, A.A. Ron! You Aaron tonight. In this one, there's a $10 straddle under the gun. A few people fold, and then I look down at Deuce for offsuit. I should just make the fold here, but I can't fold my favorite basketball player, Colby, baby. So I raise it to $30. Two players call, and we go three ways to a flop. The flop is Deuce 810 all off suit. Not bad, I got bottom pair. Action checks on me, and I see bet for $30. Same as if I would if I had an over pair or ace king. Only the player to my left calls, and we go heads up to a turn. The turn is the five of diamonds, which shouldn't change anything. First action's on me, and I think this is where I make a mistake. I check to my opponent, curious to see if he'll make a bet or not, but he ends up checking back. The river is the ace of diamonds, which at first I thought was a good card, because the way I play this hand, it looks like I have ace king. I didn't think my pair of deuces would hold up, so if he did have a medium pocket pair, like pocket sevens or nines, this would put a lot of pressure on that type of holding. I bet out $75, and my opponent tanks for a whole minute before making the call. Damn, I really thought I was gonna get this one through. I tell my opponent he's good, and he flips over, Ace Queen for River Top Pair. What the? You took that long to call it Ace Queen? Wow. So much respect. I love it. Nice hand, nice hand, but a doo, man. Last interesting hand of the night. There's a $10 straddle on the button. One player calls, and when action's on me, I look down at 10 jack offsuit, and I just make the flat call. Another player calls, and then the button raises to $43. I make the call along with another player, and we go three ways to a flop. Flop's a pretty good one. 9 jack 4 all off suit, and I got top pair. First action's on me, and I check it to the pre-flop aggressor. But surprisingly, action checks through. The turn is the king of spades, which is definitely in the 3 betters range, so that sucks. I check again, and it checks over to the button, which then he bets out $50. I get a little sticky here and make the call. I mean, he could have ace king here. But he could also have ace queen or ace ten of spades as well the way he played it. Because if I had ace queen or ace ten of spades, I'm definitely betting this turn as well with so much equity. The other player folds and we go heads up to a river, which is a deuce of spades, now bringing in the backdoor flush. I check it over for a third time and he sizes up pretty big, $150. I pretty quickly fold. With his turn bet, that king probably connected him somehow with either top pair straight, or even a flush draw, which now he would've gone runner runner. And what do you know? My opponent shows ace queen of spades for runner runner flush. Damn. He said, see you on the river. I don't show faces in my vlog, but this guy really wants to be on the vlog and said it was okay for me to show his face. I've played with this player before. Good guy, fun action player. So nice hand boss, but a do man. <laughs> And just like that, I rack up my chips and call it a night. Alright, just got done with the session. Swinging session tonight. I felt like in the beginning of the session, I had a dead seat. And I was just kind of bluffing my way through, just getting small pots. And then towards the end of the night, I got kind of hot. And the hand of the night was the pocket sevens, where I fought middle set. And I put my opponent on pocket aces. And I just want to put a lot of pressure on the aces. And I know when people have aces, they don't want to fold. So I didn't want to slow play the set. And definitely took the, a good size pot of the night. So I was in for the game for 400 and out for 865. So up 465 bucks. So, solid win tonight. I'll definitely take it, but thanks for watching and see you on the river.